Hello everybody, welcome back to we're doing another Strength Switch Heroes video, and this video is going to be on Angle of Twist. Super simple one, super easy. Uh, another topic that we're just going to take super slow at the beginning, and then use as a building block to understand the main fundamental concepts of Torque and Torsion. Um, if you need a recall to what was going on uh, in our previous video, we talked about uh, what Torque is and how the formulas came about, and what all these different formulas mean at the top here. So if you need a recall, you can click the link at the top. And I strongly recommend starting there before hopping into this one, because um, it's going to help a lot to just understand the fundamentals. So basically, we're going to use the same uh, member that we analyzed previously from our previous video, except now we're going to use it to explain what the angle of twist actually is. So let's imagine that we have a member, and we're assuming that it's going to be fixed at one end, with the torque being applied at the other. Now, what is this doing? This is going to create uh, an angle, actually, at the face of the member, which is known as the angle of twist. To explain this a little bit better, we can also look at the side profile of our member. And if we imagine that we had a plane that runs parallel to the longitudinal axis and comes out right to the edge of our member, that from that side profile, we are actually going to notice that that plane is beginning to rotate or twist about that longitudinal axis. And as you get further and further down the line, you're creating a further distance away from that initial reference point. Now, if we think about this in term, terms of elements, uh, infinitesimally small points that are taken from the outer face of our member, we're going to be creating something that's called a shearing strain. If you also need to recall to that, there's a link at the top. But pretty much what all that means uh, is that we're going to be creating a angle between our initial reference point and the final point uh, of, of this plane as the twist is occurring. See, from that fixed point, we have no shearing strain or shearing uh, angle being created. And as you go further up, it's most severe at the end point where the member is not fixed. Now, using some basic trigonometry and the points that we have identified on this member, uh, specifically, we're going to look at A, B, and B prime for now. We're going to be figuring out how to determine this angle that's being created between the origin of the plane and the final position of the plane. And we know that the opposite over adjacent is going to be equal to the tan of this shearing angle. So in other terms, our opposite is going to be the length BB prime, and the adjacent is going to be this AB here. Now, the first thing that we need to cover is that this tan is going to be neglected for our case, uh, just for simplicity, because the angle of twist generally created is a very, very, very small value. Uh, this is just a super exaggerated version, just to demonstrate the concepts of what's happening when you actually apply a torque to a member. But for the case of like a metal shaft, you're gonna have a super uh, small angle that's created here. So the value of tan inverse is going to be almost proportional to the angle on its own. And now that's out of the way, we can actually start replacing these, uh, these annotated lengths for variables that we can actually solve for or find. Now, the first one is going to be AB, which is pretty simple. It's BA, simply just the length of our entire member. So we're replacing that with L. Now, for the BB prime, we, have to, we actually have to take a look at the face of our member to use uh, some trigonometry rules here. So once again, using the same kind of logic, if we needed to find this angle theta, we are going to take the opposite over the adjacent, and we're going to be looking at a length c, which is the extreme length from that longitudinal axis to the end of our member, or the edge face, to uh, the opposite side, which is bb prime, but in our case, we need to find this value bb prime. So when we take tan inverse of theta, we're going to have bb prime over c. Now rearranging that formula to solve for bb prime, we're going to be left with c theta, obviously neglecting uh, that tan inverse that's created as well. And this is a similar relationship we can use at any point on the member. Uh, Simply just another formula representing here. If you do the same thing at a length p from the longitudinal axis, you're going to come out with the same angle of twist and the same answers. Now we need to 
look into how we can solve for this shear. Because rearranging this, this shearing strain, we are more interested in this angle of twist, right? So we have to get rid of this variable here. But how can we replace it? Well, we're going to use our material properties in order to solve for this. So the first thing we actually need to look at is the shear modulus g, which is a bit new for us. And pretty much what this is, is the modulus of rigidity. And in the simplest terms, it is a material property um, that takes the member and relates the ratio of shear stress developed to the shear strain developed. So as one is happening, the other will follow. And using that relationship, you can rearrange this formula to get the shearing strain is equal to shear stress at a distance c over the shear modulus. Now we just need to plug this back into our original formula, the angle of twist, and we have something that looks like this. But we can make this even simpler by using our torque formula that we solved for previously and rearranging that for the shear stress at c, plugging it into here, which will leave us with a formula that looks like this. And breaking it down and simplifying it a bit more, canceling out the c's, you're left with an angle of twist formula that looks like this, where you have the torque at c times the length of your member at the given point over the shearing modulus times the polar moment of inertia. And another interesting thing about this formula is that it's going to be uh, cumulative. So as you have multiple torques applied at multiple lengths, you have to consider each of them and how they affect your angle of twist at the final position that you're interested in. So we're going to see this in the problem, but just as a quick explanation of why that's happening, if you imagine this member is fixed at this end, we are going to have a rotation about this point here, which is in the clockwise direction. Then following that, we have at C, a counterclockwise rotation, which is going to act uh, adversely to what was initially happening at that uh, initial point D. So that is going to change the angle of twist at this point. All right, so let's solve this problem. We're looking at a 20 millimeter diameter, A36 steel shaft, which is subject to the torques as shown. And it wants us to determine the angle of twist at point B. So our first takeaway from reading this problem is that our reference point should be from point B and work towards the fixed end. So we're starting at point B and going down this way. I've also flipped the convention that I had at the top right, just so that it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on in the problem. And another instinct that we should have is we need to draw our torque table and see cumulatively what's going on as different torques are being applied along different points of our member. So our first torque at point B being uh, looked at is an 80 Newton meter in the clockwise direction, meaning that this is going to be negative based on our convention. Moving on to the next point, we have 20 in the opposite direction in the counterclockwise, meaning that we're going to take 80 uh, and add a positive 20 to it, meaning that we're going to be left with negative 60. Similarly, here we have the 30, which is in the clockwise direction, meaning that it's going to be negative, bringing this back down to a negative 90. Now let's look at the formula for angle of twist and figure out what we need to do. So the angle of twist, obviously, is cumulative from each of the different points where something is changing along the member. So for our member, G and J are going to be uniform throughout, since it tells us that we have a 20 millimeter diameter and an A36 steel shaft, meaning that both of these properties are going to be, remain the same throughout. The second thing we need to do is break it up into sections meaning that if we had a summation formula, it wants us to go from point B all the way to point A using that formula. Now that we know this, the formula is going to look something like this. We can bring out these constants of the polar moment inertia and the shear modulus. And then in brackets, we can break down the individual components where we have the torque at BC plus the length at BC, followed by the torque at CD, length CD, 
followed by the torque at dA, length dA. Now it's simply plugging in exactly what we have in order to solve this problem. So let's look at this big component right here. We're going to have the polar mode of inertia first. We're going to have 1 over, and we have pi over 2. Now we have a solid shaft, meaning that our i is not going to be considered. And since we are giving units in Newton meter, we have to consider that this diameter, 20 millimeters, uh, in terms of meters. So what that's going to be is first of all divided by 2, since we're giving it a diameter, going to be looking at 0 0.01 meters, and that's to the power of 4. And if you search up A36 steel shaft or steel, uh, you're going to come up with a value of 75 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared for the shear modulus. And what that pretty much is, is a conversion from gigapascals to Newton per meter squared. That 10 to the 9 being added to the 75 or multiplied by. Next, we have the terms that are being multiplied by this. And it's very simple. The torque at BC is written on this table right here. So we have negative 80. And we are going to be multiplying this by the length, which is, once again, given in millimeters. So we have to convert that to meters. And we're doing the same thing for the next segment as well. 60 times 0.6. And similarly, 90 times the 0.2. And it's simply just plugging that all into your calculator and figuring out the final answer, which is going to give you 0 0.1002 radians. And depending on what uh, type of solution your paper wants, it's going to ask you to either convert this to degrees or leave it in radians. But that's your final answer, and that's the intro to the angle of twist. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one when things get a little bit trickier. Thanks for watching.